What is going on guys back at it again with another video today fellas We are going to be looking at the cornerback rankings for the 2021 NFL season entering the 2021 NFL season For the best 32 outside cornerbacks not slot cornerbacks outside cornerbacks Guys like Jalen Ramsey, Xavier Howard, Stephon Gilmore, and Jai Alexander All according to PFF PFF did release a article today And um yep today and yeah, Ben Lindsley, who Lindsay, who was the one that released it, has ranked the top thirty-two cornerbacks outside, outside like um, who I just explained. So starting off with uh, number one is Jair Alexander for the Green Bay Packers. Jair Alexander, um, I think he's actually pretty good. Um, he's a very he's a very um reliable cornerback. He's made um very big plays, but um. It's too bad the Green Bay Packers can't capitalize off of him. <coughs> NFC Championship game. <coughs> yeah, it's just been a very... He's been a very solid corner. Um, I would see why they ranked him number one. I've seen his highlights. He, so, ever since 2019, he's forced 16 incompletions. And um, he's aggressive sometimes. He's some, He may give up a big play most of the time. Like, sometimes he'll give up a big play. His aggressiveness, you cannot do that as a cornerback. And um, the season, he was phenomenal. 353 receiving yards uh, in six, nearly 600 snaps. He was worth 1.4 wins above a replacement level player. That just proves that he is elite. And yeah, I give him a big thumbs up. Ding! Alright, next up we got Jalen Ramsey for the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, I think Jalen Ramsey is pretty good. Um, Really aggressive cornerback he's a uh, he talks trash a lot but um most of the time he could back it up but it was that one time in the NFC divisional round against the um Packers where he gave up a touchdown to a Devonta Adams and he started acting like a baby so yeah anyways he was really good this season even though he allowed eight receptions in week 1 and the remainder of the season he barely allowed he he allowed three times that, which is really good. Which is I'm I'm sh I'm impressed. Uh, the Rams did an excellent job for grabbing him, and um, yeah, I hope to see more of him. Next up is Marlon Humphrey for the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, Marlon Humphrey, I think he's pretty good. Um, not the best corner. Um, as you can see here, he's ranked number three. But Marlon Humphrey is is a very dominant corner, very aggressive. Very good on man, very very versatile. He can play anything you want. Like you give him zone coverage, man coverage, blitz. He'll he'll do all of that. Very good at forcing turnovers. And um, fifth year, yeah, he's been only in the league for five years. He's um been and he's already number three. So yikes! Watch out for him. Whoever's facing Baltimore this year. Next up is Xavier Howard for the Miami Dolphins. I have to say, Howard impressed me last year big time. He impressed me big time last year. Xavier and Howard for the Miami Dolphins, he was absolutely incredible. Ten interceptions, double-digit pass breakups, and a grade of 89.6, graded by PFF, which is actually very, very high. He has been he has led all cornerbacks at least 150 times over those f over the five years he's played. And, um, yeah, he's an all-pro corner. I think he deserves to be an all-pro, and he has a very bright future ahead of him. Next up, we have a New York Giant, James Bradbury the fourth. As you guys know, the Giants did get him into, in free agency last year, and, oh, my God, he he really amped up that defense. He had, a, he had three interceptions, one incredible one against Allen Robinson, which was, I don't know how he made that catch. Um, he is, uh, he made the Pro Bowl this season, and, um, he spent his first four years in Carolina, as you guys know, but now he is with New York Giants, and he has absolutely anteed up their secondary, now along with the door, now he's got a Dory Jackson along with him, man, that, this, that coverage defense, it's gonna be scary. Next up we have Stephon Gilmore for the New England Patriots. Uh, Gilmore had a good year in 2019, very good year, one def got him defensive player of the year. But uh, he definitely declined in 2020. As it says here, his grade was 58.5 in 2020. But that is, but due to an injury, he was out for, for the most of the year. But still, he wasn't that 
good. He recorded one interception, two pass breakups on 42 targets, and allowing a career-high 96.7 passer rating. I have to say that's not really good, not the best, but I think it's phenomenal in my opinion. Next up, we have Tredavious White for the Buffalo Bills. Uh, I think Tredavious White's pretty good. Uh, I've seen him play. He's a very good zone cor- zone cornerback. Um, he plays his zone very well. Of course, he got mossed by uh, DeAndre Hopkins. But still, he's very his zone tactics are unbelievable. And he's a uh, 17.1 of his targets have either resulted in a pass breakup or an interception. He ranks 94th percentile of all cornerbacks on zone coverage. So he's really good, really, really good. Next up, we have Denzel Ward for the Cleveland Browns. Yes, Denzel Ward. Despite being drafted in the top five, uh, and top five pick, boom, I love him. One of the best cornerbacks in the league. Uh, I'm so shocked. I'm so amazed by what he's done for the, for the Browns. A huge part of the second door, secondary. They lost him. Oh, my God. That would take a massive toll. They still have Joseph Taki Taki. They... They still have Carl Joseph. Now they got then John Johnson the third from the Rams. So that's a big plus. Big plus. Okay, next up we have William Jackson for the Washington football team. I believe he played for the uh Bengals and wow, he was phenomenal for the Bengals. He was their best corner. And um Yeah, um ever since tw- in 2017, he allowed 30 receiving yards on 359 coverage snaps in the final 11 games. He hasn't really been that good, but I feel like he's going to be a lot better with Washington because of Jack Del Rio's defense and get rid of that nasty Bengal defense out of there. So, yeah, I think William Jackson to to the Washington football team is a big plus, and he's top 10 corner. Next up, we have Marcus Peters for the Baltimore Ravens. Here we go. A Baltimore Ravens cornerback duo, top 10. Marcus Peters, I love him. Very fast, very agile, very versatile. He knows he knows how to get turnovers. 52 pass breakups in, like, what, the last five years. 31 interceptions since 2015. Nine more than any cornerback. And, um, yeah, he's a big part of that Baltimore defense. Their top, I believe he's their top cornerback, honestly. Not Marlon Humphrey. I believe he is. Parkus Peters, and um, yeah, he's very, um, he's aggressive, which, um, as you guys know, aggression can burn you, but still, brings you, sometimes brings you good. Next up is Richard Sherman, as a free agent. I don't really like, I like Richard Sherman for what he did for the Legion of Boom, but honestly, Richard Sherman is just, uh, he's just dragged, he's not, he has not been good, like, seriously, I haven't seen him be that good in such a long time. But he's still good. Um, um, he was a valuable part for uh, not. I don't think he was a valuable part in 2019 for the Niners. He was, but he wasn't. But still, I think he still has the potential to be a second string corner, maybe a first, second string, first string corner, maybe because his versatile, because how versatile he is, and what kind of a leader he is. Next up, we have a Dory Jackson for the New York Football Giants. Another giant on the list. A Dory Jackson. I really like him. He's a very... I saw his highlights. Very... He doesn't get the interceptions, but he does get the pass breakups. And um, even though he even though he missed most of 2020 because of a knee injury, he has still been very good. Next up is Steven Nelson, a free agent. He was on the Steelers, but I don't even know who this guy is, so I'm not going to go over him is that much. Ranks top 10 in uh, completion percentage, 53.9. Pass rating, 75.1. And 68 players at that position, 100 targets to 2018. So, eh, it's okay. Byron Jones. I've heard of him before. He's really good. 1.4 coverage snap with Miami in 2020. But the thing about that is that was actually, a, that was actually doubled. From uh, last year, 0.7 yards per snap coverage in 2018-2019 with Dallas. Honestly, he did regress, but still, an amazing player. I feel like uh, Miami, he's very important to Miami as an asset, and he will be in the future. 
uh, for Miami. Next up is Carlton Davis. With Carlton Davis, we have Tampa Bay for the Tampa Bay Bucks. I am astounded with what the Bucks have done overall. Carlton Davis is absolutely incredible. One of the number one cornerbacks in the NFC South. Since 2019, he has, with the, he has been tested more than any cornerback, as it says here. But, um, yeah, 197 targets. Wow, 17.3 in completion rate. And has seen at least 100 targets over the last two years. I think he's really good for Tampa Bay. Huge asset. One of one corner. Hands down, one of the best corners in the NFC. Next up, we have J.C. Jackson for the New England Patriots. Yes, the New England Patriots have a good corner in J.C. Jackson. Seven interceptions last year, I think, or eight or nine. I don't know. But still, no cornerback league has been more productive on passes. 20 or more yards. Has allowed five to 40 targets to be completed. Telling 11 interceptions. So, he's been really good. Joe Hayden. I th- Joe Hayden was the Steelers' best corner last year. He was okay. He was good. But um, I feel like he could have done better for the Steelers overall. I think the Steelers could have just gone better. <coughs> Cleveland Browns. <coughs> Still, they're a very good team. Still, very good corner. I feel like he's he's, he's going to be a huge asset to next year. Marshawn Lattimore. Yes. Even though this man is arrested and is sitting in jail, I think he's still a good corner. Was still his future is still being decided by his chart by uh, criminal charges, but he has been very good as a rookie. I mean, I mean his PFF grade was ter- I mean, His PFF grade has fallen big time. He has not been that good, but the <clears throat> but a Saints household name, and he is a Saints. He is a Saints franchise player. He's um, I've seen him all over the field making pass breakups. Big name, very big name, um, next to Marcus Williams. And so we have Jamel Dean for the Tampa Bay Bucks. This guy was once the top corner for the Buccaneers. I didn't think so. I'm like, who is Jamel Dean? Now I know who he is, but I just think he's av- I, I think he's okay. Like top thirty two, yeah, that's pretty good, but really, I don't think he's that good. Next we have Darius Williams of the Los Angeles Rams. Oh, this guy's very good. Um I've seen him, very big. Not big, but very fast, versatile guy. Um, has a lot of a power and knows how to get a knows how to get good interceptions and high turnover rate. I like that. Next up, we have Kyle Fuller for the Denver Broncos. Well, he was just took nabbed out of free agency from the Bears, so yeah, he re- he will re- reunite with Vic Fangio. So even though his uh. Even though um, when he was with, when he was with Vic Fangio, it says here it, he was a lot better. On the he had the three highest PFF grades of Fuller's career, Chicago. Now he has be, now he has steadily declined, and now he's back with Vic Fangio. Made a lot better. All right, next we have Jason Verrett. Uh, this guy's very good, very versatile. Um, I don't have a lot to say about these guys, honestly, so I'm just going to speed it up right here. Jason Verrett, very versatile, very good. He has a 90.9 coverage grade, one of the best. Um, big vet, he's a, he's a strong leader for the Niners. Darius Slay, um, I feel like this guy has definitely declined with the Eagles. So, um, I'm not going to say too much about him. He's phenomenal with the Lions, but he very much declined with the Eagles, so, Sorry. Bradley Roby, I don't even know what this guy is, so I'm just going to skip over him. Shaquille Griffin for the Jacksonville Jaguars. They got him out of free agency. It was Seattle's best cornerback. He was a very good cornerback for them. I have to assume that um, he's going to be their starting cornerback. And, um, yeah, I'm very excited for the future with him. Very excited for the future in Jacksonville. I think they're going to be a good team. Next up, we have uh, Kendall Fuller for the Washington football team. Kendall Fuller was on the Chiefs for a while, and um, he actually did really good with the Chiefs. Um, he did get that game-ending interception in Super Bowl 54, and um, yeah, he's just been a very dominant uh, cornerback. He knows how to make big plays, and I see he has a big future with Washington. All right, next up we have Janoris Jenkins for the Tennessee Titans. Jenkins, um, he's terrible. Like for the Giants, he was. Suckish. He was absolutely garbage. So um, I'm not going to say too much about him. To all, 
So Tennessee, he's trash. I don't know why he got him, but he's absolute trash. Do not. Why? Why? He's so trash, though. That's all I have to say about him. Malcolm Butler. Another. He's an old guy. What's the stairs on the are? A retirement home. Um, I feel like all people know him for is that Malcolm Butler interception. But he did do very good in New England. Slowly declined with Tennessee, though. Arnold Darby for the Denver Broncos. Not going to say too much about him. I don't really know who he is. So, uh, yeah. This is Xavier Rhodes for the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, Xavier Rhodes had a big decision to make, and he made the right one by joining back with the Colts. Top five defense. They have a very strong defensive line. I feel like they deserve to be better. I feel like they're like a 13-win team this year with uh, Carson Wentz coming back to, with uh, Frank Reich. But, yeah, I'm very excited with the Colts. And, um, and they're going to have a strong defense. Trey Waynes. I don't really know what this guy is, though. So, Casey Hayward Jr. for the Las Vegas Raiders. Um feel like Las Vegas really needed this guy because he was a stud for the Chargers last year. But, yeah, with the Las Vegas' terrible defense. Like, terrible. So bad. I don't know what happened to... Like, it was terrible defense. Like, here's the thing with Las Vegas. Like, they always... They steadily, like, go. Like, they're good, and then they just drop it. Like, why? But still, he's a very strong asset. He's going to be a very strong asset for Las, uh, Las Vegas. And, um, yeah, I feel like um, Las Vegas is going to be better in general. And Casey Hayward made a big decision, and I feel like he made the right one going to Las Vegas. Well, that is all, folks. Hope you enjoyed the video. And um, subscribe, share, like, comment. And I'll, talk, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.